We would give them the software and the tools. They use the films they want to use. They ask the questions they want to ask. And so it gives the missionaries a digital way to reach out. And that Ramadan thing, uh, outreach, I think the ads reach well over 7 million people. We had 5,000 people respond. And in one month, in closed countries, 233 people came to Christ. Well, welcome back to another episode of Good Business. Guys, I'm so excited to have uh, some very special guests here today. We've got Rick and Jules, uh, and they they are involved in the Jesus Film Project, and I'm going to let them share more about it. But uh, the reason why I wanted them on this episode today is uh, we, we call it good business, and uh, I obviously love the word good, I mean, good agency, good studios, good business. Um, well, here's the deal. Uh, good is uh, people make fun of it. We use it in dad jokes all the time. Good is, um, is the word that God used to describe his greatest creation. He said, after creating the heavens and the earth for six days and resting on the seventh, he said, this is good. So who am I to say that anything that I do creatively is great if God's greatest work is good? And so what we want to do is we want to just create amazing content that is glorifying to him and, and bringing, um, bringing about the, the uh, kingdom. And so that's why we're talking today is we get to talk about how y'all are utilizing film to bring about the kingdom. And so um, I'd love it if you could just kind of tell, tell me your story of uh, working with the Jesus Film Project. Uh, how did it come about? And uh, we'll dive in from there. Sound like a plan? Sounds That's a plan. Good. Awesome. <laughs> so, Rick, uh, w- what's your story? What's your, your involvement in the Jesus Film Project? Well, do you want to go back or do you just want to go forward from where we are? <laughs> I mean, uh, I can tell you how we got involved. Yeah, let's, let's start with that. That's, yeah. uh, when Julie and I were in college, we met in college, and we were part of Campus Crusade for Christ. Uh, back then, it was called Campus Crusade. It's now called Crew. Mm. Um, so that was our involvement in terms of, you know, knowing who Campus Crusade was, being involved with them. Um, fast forward 30 years, um, and uh, we had run our own advertising agencies, uh, one in Dallas, one in Austin. Uh, we got to a point where we closed our agency in Austin. I had a partner that wanted out, so we closed the agency down. And it was at that point where uh, we were both asking ourselves, God, what do you want us to do? What's our next step? And you're going to have to show us. Um, I mean, it was right after that, uh, one of our uh, leaders of a small group that we were in, um, who was on staff with crew already, uh, said, hey, let's go to lunch. And I just want to, you know, pray with you, you know, hang out. And when we got to lunch, he kind of had this smirk, he kind of had this smile on his face. And I was like, okay, what's happening? And he said, I'll always remember, he said, I promise this wasn't a bait and switch, but what would you guys think about coming on staff with Crusade? And at that time, it was still Crusade, and they changed the name in 2012, the crew. And, uh, yeah, I looked at him and said, I wouldn't think anything because I have not thought about it. Um, and uh, that's when God started kind of working uh, on our my heart and Julie's. Um, one, of the, one of the things we, we had always... Um, we're kind of scared of is raising support. You know, we have Mm -hmm. to raise 100% of our support. Um, And it was that point when he asked me that I felt this peace that God was Mm -hmm. like, I'm going to take care of that. Don't worry about that part of it. I'll take care of that. Mm -hmm. And from there, you know, I went and told Julie, she can tell you her reaction, but uh, there was just a peace that came over Mm it. Uh, And that's what started the whole thing. Wow. Wow. So, so your background in advertising um, contributed to everything that you've been doing here. So right. it's not like that went to void. You didn't like toss that out of right. your uh, your wheelhouse and you were able to actually put that to work, right? What did that look like? Well, and I was going to say initially uh, when we came on staff, we came on staff with the creative side of uh, crew, which was, you know, we had artists all over the country uh, that, you know, did web design, you know, graphic design layout, you know, we were doing those things that we had been trained to do, uh, got our degrees in and things. Um, but we also had a film team there in Austin, here in Austin. And, you know, they were responsible for, you know, getting 
you know, change life videos, you know, talking, fa- you know, talking head videos. Uh, but we also had a side that was part of the Jesus film. So our headquarters is in um, Orlando. Uh, but we had a team here that was creating short films. Wow. So that was kind of our tie-in to the short film side of Jesus film. Um, now they've, since then, they've kind of taken that and they're doing most of that work in Florida at our headquarters. So um, that was kind of our tie-in from the creative side to film. Well, that's great. So, and uh, what, what was it that drew you to this? Because obviously, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty clear uh, what, right. what, what Rick was just saying, but, right. but what, what was just like that defining moment when you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, this is what we're supposed to do. Right. I mean, all my life, I, I say all my life, probably with uh, from college, I've always wanted to be a missionary. And when Rick and I got married, I thought, well, you know, I don't ever see this happening. It's okay. We, we, wherever you work, you're on mission. And so I've, I've always felt that way. And actually, right when we first got married, we went, we got right involved with the ministry that hired us, a broadcast ministry. And um, that was really fun. And we ended up working together in the same creative department. But um, so I've always just, I've, we've, we've always been very involved with Young Life and different ministries, that kind of thing. But um, <laughs> that day when he came home, because after closing the ad agency here in, in Austin, it was really scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and most people know that. You know, it's, it was like, boom, our income was gone. And so we were doing everything we could. And um, so when he came home and presented this to me, I knew what that meant. I meant yeah. it's like, we're going to have to raise support. Wow. And honestly, my honest gut feeling was that... Um, people are going to think we're taking the easy way out. Mm. And, you know, like, oh, maybe y'all can support us. And, you know, and Rick said, <laughs> I love what Rick said. He goes, this isn't going to be easy. Mm. And and he was right. It took us two years to raise our full financial support. But I really, when he came home and told me what Bill told him, that'll just, you know, where I'll end this, is that he... I thought, you sucker, you know, you fell for it. You fell for the crusade talk. And he said, because when he came home, he said, sit down. I'm like, oh, no, what happened? And to think about raising support when we were so um, desperate at the time financially, I just couldn't even see it. But when he explained it to me, I the Lord gave me that same, it's going to be okay, I've got mm. you. And um, he had brought me to a point through a series of circumstances to hear him in that moment. And I never could have ever imagined that we'd be missionaries, you know, together doing graphic design in Austin. Because usually when you go on staff, they're going to send you somewhere right. and you don't really have a choice so much. Um, so that was, that, was, that was just totally amazing. And uh, we, we found ourselves on this film team doing graphic design, and it has just been just amazing. We joined what they call mid-career. So we didn't join out of college, which most people do. So they've been on, like people our age have been on staff for 30 years. Wow. And so we've been on staff coming up 12 years. And um, to me, I'm like, we're just little babies. But when I sa- <laughs> say only 12 years, people are like, that's a long time. <laughs> so we've learned a lot and grown yeah. a lot in our, in our ministry there. So. Wow. That's so cool. So tell me a little bit about the, the, the short film component of what y'all are yeah. doing at the Jesus Film Project right now. Um, so I'll, I'll direct that toward Rick. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, the role that we play now um, is, at least Julie and I, and I'll get kind of to the film production side, is uh, like we have two different roles. Uh, our, our team is called film curation. So uh, it involves uh, creating films, which our team does, but it also involves licensing films that other filmmakers have done. Mm-hmm. And it's all, the, the, the whole purpose is to either create or license films that we can use in starting gospel conversations. So uh, and a lot of people ask, well, were these, you know, like gospel films? But they're, they're not. They're, they're totally just conversation starters. You know, they might have a, a, a theme of greed or whatever the film may be, and it just is like an opening to a conversation. Um, and what's happened now, uh, and this hasn't been the case throughout uh, the short film, the time that they've had short film, is um, everything is being contextualized to the, the people group that it's going to. Um, so our, our group has um, the top 12 hardest reach countries in the world. Mm-hmm. That's where we are focused. So if we have a film, you know, in X, you know, Turkey or whatever it may be, uh, that film is 
designed specifically for that people group and their language. So mm-hmm. every every one of our films uh, is done in their language, is is done for them. Uh, and that wasn't always the case. And we learned that the hard way. Mm-hmm. Is when we first came on staff, we were doing films. We were doing American films, Oof. trying to use those in places that this just didn't work. You know, so, so now it's really great because there's a whole strategy behind every film we make. Um, and, you know, we've seen amazing success with that uh, because people just relate to it, you know, in their own heart language. Wow. <clears throat> so um, when it comes to these films, are, are you all utilizing local talent to, to produce these or are you sending your crew over there? Like, what, is it, what does that look like, that process? Or is it different? For um, we use we use local talent. We um, when we shoot films, we've done some here in Austin. We hire the actresses, actors. But um, Rick was a part of a film in no, 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 where we, but, um, Kenya. Kenya, and um, they had the actors there, and they they hired the the PAs and the gaffers. I mean, everything they hired local people and That's pay so cool. them. They're not yeah. just like, hey, you know, we're doing this film, and. Um, that film uh, was amazing, you know, using their actors and uh, films all over the world that we do. We just did one in Turkey, same thing, hired actors. Uh, and we don't bring our own equipment in. Mm-hmm. They, they usually will, it, they have to go locally. scout it. It's yeah. a horrible job to have to go to Turkey <laughs> and go scout things or to all go to Ireland or wherever. But um, yeah. yeah, so we definitely wow. use local talent and local local. Um, staff, I guess that's how you say it. That's incredible. So, Mm -hmm. so obviously there's a reason why y'all are doing this. Right. Uh, you believe that short films do something. What what is Mm -hmm. the purpose behind these short films and why do you think it's so impactful? Mm -hmm. Well, for me personally, uh, I've noticed this in just the, you know, if, if you or I go and watch a film just at a theater, we will come out of that film talking about it. Yeah. You know, there's always, well, I like this part, or I didn't like this part, or, you know, what did that mean? You know, and that's when I kind of first saw the power of media and film is there's immediate conversation. There's immediate, um, you know, uh, common ground uh, with with the people that you're talking to. And uh, we've seen that be the case with these. I've, we, we had some films uh, that we did here in Austin. We went on UT campus and started sharing short films. And that's like going into the lion's den. You know, it's not an easy place to go. They don't want you there. No, yeah. no. And UT, University of Texas, not yeah. Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is there another UT? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, people always ask us, which UT are you talking about? I'm like, what do you mean? The you one know? and only. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it was amazing. Uh, just wow. walk up to someone and say, would you mind watching this short film and telling me what you think about it? Um, and immediate conversations. Yeah. Uh, whereas there's that tendency to think, no, get away. I don't want to, uh, you know, talk to you. I don't want to, you know. But when you ask someone about a film or a media, people are really, uh, they love to share what they think. Yeah. Even, you know, and it, like when we were doing this, it's like good or bad. I just want to hear what you think. Um, mm. And it really turns into some amazing conversations. I remember um, the first film that y'all shared with me uh, was one that was filmed in Southern Europe. I don't remember exactly the name of it, um, but I was I was astounded at the production mm-hmm. value because mm-hmm. um, because there's this this connotation with Christian or faith based films that it's right. low quality or that right. the story is not compelling or it's just regurgitated uh, time and time and time again. And um, back I think it was 2018 when you mm-hmm. shared that film with me. And it was about uh, some refugees that were were yeah. coming in, um, and someone swam out, and and there was mm-hmm. a, a Christ type sacrifice, mm-hmm. um, and it was a huge like mm-hmm. uh, it, it was huge from the standpoint of high production value. It was a very clear like message being communicated, right. but it wasn't like uh, Bible thumping or right. anything like that. So, so I can see how those kind of films can start those conversations. Mm-hmm. And even the recent films too, that, that you shared with me, I was, mm-hmm. I was blown away at the production value. And I think that's just so critical for any sort of film success. If you want to be taken seriously right. and, and you mm-hmm. don't want to diminish the value of the conversation that hopefully will ensue, then obviously you've, you can't, you can't cut corners on that. Right. So, 
So how do you guys manage that? How do you make sure that that, that quality is there? I know that that's probably on a case by case basis, uh, just cause you're right. using so many different crews, but, um, do y'all come up with the stories? Do you come up with the scripts and then, and then, um, hand it off or what does that process look like? Yeah. Uh, Every film we do, uh, aside from licensing other films, sure. but every film we create, we have a whole writing team that you know comes up with the you know concept, comes up with the scripts. Uh, we have you know, like most films, goes through ten revisions of the script. Um, we are part of that decision-making process. The, the little team that we're part of. Um, in looking over the scripts and saying that doesn't quite make sense or that, you know, maybe we can change this. And so there's a whole team that does that part of it. Um, then we have a whole team, a production team that's involved in, you know, actually producing the film. Um, so a lot of those, when we do local films, a lot of our production team, they're the ones that, that do all that. Mm -hmm. Now, when we go overseas, uh, then we hire local talent to do that. We do take, we have a cinematographer that we use, uh, exclusively and we take him all over the world and he's the one that shoots the like that Maria. Yeah. He shot that film. Wow. He had never been in the ocean with a camera, <laughs> which was amazing, you know, cause I, it, I think it imagine. turned out great, but, mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful film. So yeah, pretty much everything is done in house. Uh, and, um, but, uh, you know, the whole, we, we want to use as much, as many people on the ground, wherever we go, as possible. Um, but the, the whole process, there's a lot of people involved in the process. Oh, I can and you only imagine. Yeah. You were talking about the, the quality. Yeah. Uh, we've had some misses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can imagine. There I are films imagine. that we've done where we go, hmm, yeah. <laughs> maybe that wasn't so great. Uh, but yeah. for the most part, it's, it's, there's some quality control somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. you know, that goes into it. And a lot of our staff, they are from the industry. Mm -hmm. um, one of our guys worked for Marvel. I mean, there's, they're, they're, they're believers who have been called to mm -hmm. out of the, the commercial side and into this. And um, that has been, you can see in their quality of their work. And um, we also have some hired out people that um, really amazing uh, writers um, and uh, filmmakers that have also joined us as well. They, they come to quite a bit of our things, our shoots. To me, one of the most enjoyable parts, we, we stupidly said that they could use our home for a film. You never do that. <laughs> never say, yeah, you can use my home because you're like, oh, this is great. But um, you... Uh, there's a lot of people that are hired. You know, yeah. we had the, the makeup people, the... Um, I don't know who all did we hire for that one. The actors that sure. we had children involved. It was a trick or treat kind of thing. So we we did it in May at night, and um, we had to tell of our neighbors and all that kind of thing. But the ministry that happens there is is amazing. And in Kenya, same thing. These mm. actors were not believers mm. at all, and this one of them was, and then the other one was not. And he had the gospel shared with him what thirteen times. <laughs> I can imagine yeah. because yeah. they Over, were just, let's do that one, one yeah. more time. Yeah, one and that time. was a gospel centric yeah. thing. They were doing the bridge and using soccer as the mm. metaphor, and um, that is amazing because there's a lot of ministry. I had a few people ask me, so what is it that you're doing, and what is this for the parents of the children? Um, just that kind of thing is also a really cool thing. So. That's amazing. So when we're thinking about just like this yeah. context of evangelism right. um, and all these opportunities, you mentioned earlier, Rick, the the way you'll go out onto UT campus and just ask, hey, can you give me some feedback? Is that the only um, mechanism that you use for for distributing <laughs> these films or are there other ways that you guys are utilizing these films for evangelism and discipleship and so on? Yeah, the um, there's there's a few different ways. In fact, that type of thing going onto a college campus, that's probably used less now than it, than it ever has been. Now it's, we have a whole digital strategies department that, you know, they have R&D, they have uh, a lot of people that are looking into new ways, new media to share and how to get that message across. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of things like one of the, we did a campaign not too long ago and it was over Ramadan and that specifically was through Facebook ads. So they would place Facebook ads. It would ask a question. Uh, they may or may not be pointed to a film or uh, gospel-centric, just maybe asking the questions, you know, 
have you ever thought about this? Uh, but that tied them back into someone that would chat with them and then put them in touch with someone on the ground where they are. Wow. So uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways they're being used. One of the things that I've been involved with right now is, is when we make, we call, them, we call them packages. So we'll make a film um, and then we'll make an interview with the director uh, and then we'll have a testimony uh, that has, you know, whatever that theme is of the film, like Maria, a sacrifice. Uh, then we'll make the film, we'll interview the director, what he thought, you know, the theme was and what, how it came across. And then we'll, we'll, you know, interview someone that, you know, sacrifice has meant something really big in their life. Um, but those, we're creating what we call, right now it's called Next Steps, but it's basically a spiritual journey, uh, almost like a interactive web page where someone can go, uh, there's a question asked, then there's a film, uh, and then it goes through other steps and other questions, but it leads them, the same kind of thing is leads them to someone with a conversation and then someone on the ground where they, where they live. Um, the really cool thing about this whole, they, they're, it's in beta uh, testing right now, but the, the goal is to have someone, wherever you live, you can create your own journey. Wow. So, you, you know, you could take a film that's already created, you could, you know, um, but you could, you know, customize it to the people that you're talking to. You know, you can change, you know, the language, all those things. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so that, that's really exciting. That's one of the, I'm working, kind of heading up that team of writers and um, people, you know, practitioners that will be using the films um, in, the, in the journeys and um, that's one of the really exciting things that's kind of happening right now. And one, one really one specific reason we're doing these journeys is because someone who's in a close country, they know their their audience way better than we would know. Like we would not create a journey for them. We would give them the software and the tools. They use the films they want to use. They ask the questions they want to ask. And so it gives the missionaries a digital way to reach out. And that Ramadan thing, uh, outreach, I think the ads reach well over 7 million people. We had 5,000 people respond. And in one month, in closed countries, 233 people came to Christ. Praise God. Wow. And yeah, and these are, and their ads are very specific. They're looking for people who, they're not looking to say, hey, can we tell you about Christianity? It's people who have had dreams, people who... If you know, in these close countries, a lot of them do have dreams and don't know what to do with them. And people responded a lot to that ad. Um, have you wondered how to how to know Jesus? You know, it was, they were very specific, not tricky. And um, the people that they had respond. And we had four people texting for uh, with these people digitally for over 500 hours, four people doing this night and day, and we were fasting and praying for them the entire time, and they would just give us reports, and they were just amazing. And not only that, the people who have been so excited there, they started sharing with their families, mm. and also the, the particular place that we chose, there were people on the ground. And so mm. they're, they're going to church now, they're, they're connected, and it's just been phenomenal. Wow. So, You know, many years ago, I was challenged um, by uh, by someone who was close to me who just said, hey, Clay, um, if you could put a dollar value on someone coming to know Jesus, what would that dollar value mm. be? <laughs> so when you're talking about ads... Mm -hmm. Right. The ads are expensive. Uh, yeah, very expensive. Yeah. But the thing is, like, what would that dollar value right. be? Right. And the reality is, if you're, if you're truly called mm -hmm. to, as a believer, to share the gospel, then there right. shouldn't be a dollar value on right. that. So um, I love how y'all are executing on that strategy mm -hmm. because the thing is people engage in social media mm -hmm. and in their phone all day long, every right. single day. And so um, I think a lot of churches, I remember um, when we first got started in in the media space, uh, talking to my pastor at the mm -hmm. time and saying, hey, we really need to convert your sermons into podcasts. Mm -hmm. Just, just, I mean, we're talking a long time ago. Right. And he was like, I don't, I don't think we should do that, Clay. I mean, that sounds, that sounds vain. Mm -hmm. I'm like, and uh, I'm not going to say his name, <laughs> but I'm going to say, pastor, um, no, this is mm -hmm. not vain. This is how we stay relevant to our, 
um, society right. and our culture. And I love that y'all are not afraid to just get into it, right. um, utilizing social networks to share the gospel mm-hmm. for the benefit of everyone hearing it. Because right. like if I mean, we believe the truth of the gospel, so mm-hmm. why wouldn't we? Right take advantage of every single tool available to us. And I love that you guys are doing that. And I love that there's, I mean, obviously you only have so much money Mm -hmm. (laughs) donated, but I mean, the reality is y'all probably need more donated because of the fact that ads are so expensive. I mean, um, with one of our clients who, I mean, we weren't even doing evangelism, but Hulu rejected all of our ads, all of our television ads, Hmm. because they were Christian. Because they're manually reviewed, and mm-hmm. we got somebody manually reviewing it. I hope you're watching this. Please, please uh, change your <laughs> mind on this. But they, 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 they said, "Hey, look, you cannot advertise on our platform because, mm-hmm. because of your faith." Wow. And so, I mean, that's that's I'm sure a challenge that you mm-hmm. guys run into in closed countries who don't want oh, you yeah. to do that at all. But the reality is, it's absolutely essential. You should be doing that. You should right. be utilizing every single tool necessary to to spread the gospel. And I love how you're right. doing it. One thing that really amazes me, too, is our team, they are not afraid of any technology. Mm. And they are um, looking into all kinds of ways, like, you know, five years down the road, what's going to be relevant then. And um, so that, you know, some of the things I'm scared of, it's like, I don't want to be in that space. We're going because other people are there, going to be there. And um, so our team is always looking for, for new ways. And one of the new ways I think, I know we can discuss just a little tiny bit, is sure. there's an animated series, a feature animated series that's going to be coming out. A lot of donors have gotten behind it. It's been phenomenal. And probably in September we can talk about it, but oh. not now. <laughs> so, sorry, I shouldn't probably say when we're doing this, but um, but next month uh, we could talk about it. But it's just phenomenal, and they're just, the heart and even the, the people that we hire uh, these animators originally from Disney and all their hearts are so sold mm-hmm. and just know you know what they're being a part of and it's going to be for future generations so it's been wow How not afraid we're pioneering all the time How encouraging <laughs> that's so cool yeah. that's so cool so when we're thinking about just kind of um, the 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 global impact that you're making right now um, mm-hmm. you mentioned earlier you're focusing on closed countries right mm-hmm. now um, what what is it that you're seeing as the most like beneficial strategy at this point in time mm-hmm. that y'all are executing on yeah. that, that are, that are getting those results. I know you've spoken to mm-hmm. a lot of them already, but is there a specific one that's just mm-hmm. like knocking it out of the park for you right now? I can talk about one, but sure. it, re- recently in Africa, um, what they did the Jesus film. Now the Jesus film was done in 1979. <laughs> it doesn't compare to the chosen or to, Um, The Passion of Christ or one of those, but is the most translated film in the world. It's got Mm. 2,069 languages the last time I looked. This is dialects, so you're not going to have Spanish in Spain or or Spanish in Guatemala or Spanish in Mexico. They're going to be completely different. And so that's the difference there. But in Africa, um, what they did was they showed the Jesus film. And they've showed it on television. And um, that's the most way that the best way there to reach a lot of the people in this particular part of Africa. And they knew they had they put a WhatsApp ad at mm-hmm. the bottom. They knew they were going to be overwhelmed uh, with responses. So what they did was they created a bot that would answer them. And it was obvious that it was a bot. They knew. But the bot would give the person on the other side the comfort of choosing where they wanted to go with this. I mm-hmm. want to talk to somebody. I want to text with somebody. I just want a Bible to download. Uh, I want to just see more films. And so what that would do is the, the ones who say they do want to talk to somebody, they would immediately get connected. Mm-hmm. But the ones who say they just want to watch more films, they would get connected to where the films are and stay in touch later. But that kept that kept the team from being overwhelmed. It was amazing success there. And wow. um, people are growing. It's in a very hard part of Africa mm. where people are being killed for their faith. And mm. it's just... Uh, to see this happening and the joy, they have taken it over. The people in this country have completely taken over. Jesus Film was just there to provide for them. And so that's what we do. We provide projectors. We provide any kind of media. It's because of our donors. We can just give everything away. I love that. I love that. So that's one. You may have another strategy that you've seen. Well, just, and we talked about earlier, just from where I sit and what we do and the Films we license, contextualization is everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because when we go into countries, uh, you know, American films don't work 
Mm. You know, uh, they want to see people like themselves. You know, we shot a film in Turkey and um, used Turkish actors and, you know, people on the ground. And for them, like this particular film, we kind of watched it and we're like, okay, well, you know, that's, it's, it's a good film. But for people there, uh, it's like, this is exactly, this happens here. And they, they totally relate to it. You know, mm-hmm. of course, it's in their language. And so that, that to me, especially with the, the, the part that I'm taking part in, that's the key thing in, in reaching people to me. I love that. Yeah, and the short films definitely bridge that gap because you can't just go into a close country and say, here's a film about Jesus. Yeah. But you can do short film festivals or you could do short film discussion groups. And then that's, that equips the people there to be able to do these things to start the gospel conversations. I love that. Mm-hmm. So just kind of switching gears a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys have been in ministry now for a little bit over 12 years, mm-hmm. something along those lines. Um, you've worked together for longer than that. <laughs> Um, I'd love to know just, I mean, y'all, uh, how long have y'all been married now? 32. 32 I should have had him answer that, but he knows. <laughs> you know, a lot of times I look at him and go, how many no, years have we been married? Yeah, he's always on it. it. I love it. So, so y'all been, y'all been married for a long time. You've, you've been in ministry together. You, that, that's got to put a lot of pressure on a, on a relationship and not to mention the added uh, element of, of collaborating creatively together mm-hmm. on that. What's that been <laughs> like? What are some lessons learned um, as creatives diving into these mm-hmm. projects? And, uh, and and just from a marriage standpoint, mm-hmm. I know that's kind of a, a different switch, but... but you I didn't mean, prepare me for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's it's really just a matter of like yeah. uh, handling yeah. like creative direction. Right. Um, I think that's... That's probably one of the hardest things to do when you're yeah. you're leading a project. Right. So well, I can tell you one thing because we we did a, that film at my at our house. That yeah. we, Rick was the set. What were you the set? Yeah, the set designer. Designer. Set designer. I guess, okay. Thinking the word producer. He was set designer, and I agreed to help on that one. Or when it was a Christmas film we had done, and I agreed to help. And man, he was so serious, and 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 we had to do things, and I'm like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> that did not work well for us because you know there wasn't like we're husband and wife. He yeah. was we're coworkers, and um, I said no, no, no more of this. I'm doing craft services Lessons out in the street. Learned. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> leave me alone. Yeah. No, so, but for the most part, we've always worked together. From right when we got married. Uh, this ministry asked him to work. His job was going great. My job, I worked for a magazine that had just closed. So they hired me. And then the, when they realized he was available, they hired him. He became my boss. Um, and the creative services of, gosh, when, that was early 90s, 91. Wow. But, wow. So what would you say is kind of like the biggest lesson learned? If, if mm-hmm. uh, the audience listening, there maybe it's a husband, wife running yeah. a company or in ministry together. What, what would be some advice that you would give um, based off of your experience? It's interesting. One of the, uh, there was a girl at church uh, that we were talking, we were talking very kind of nonchalantly. And at that time, I don't think she was dating anyone. And, you know, and so we're in this conversation. She reminded me about this later. And I think this really applies to us is uh, she said, you know what, uh, you know, what should I be thinking about as I, you know, look for a boyfriend, you know, like (laughs) she was just bringing up, you know, marriage and things like that. And I said, I think the most important thing is to know y'all are going the same direction. Mm. And I think with Julie and I, I see that, you know, we, we're, you know, passionate about our, you know, relationship with the Lord. We want, you know, to be in ministry, feel like God's called us there. It would be really difficult if one felt like Mm. he had called and the other didn't. Um, So I, I think that really resonated with me that, and I didn't even remember I'd said it, but, um, yeah, you want to be heading the same direction or mm. there's going to be a lot of stress. That's that's <laughs> yeah. so great. And, and I think, too, just, you know, we've done the strengths finder thing. And yeah. um, both of us are our number one is adaptability. Mm. And so we honestly, we're one of the couples who's not opposite. We are a couple like we we pretty much have the same you know, sometimes so he'll be thinking this, I'm thinking that, and we'll tell each other. So I go over here and then he goes over there and then we get all confused, you know, because we just, <laughs> we're like, all right, you know, so um, there's definitely, um, I think personalities and strengths um, of a particular couple make a difference because I do know, I do have dear friends that they, there's no way they could work with their husbands mm. or so opposite <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah. You know, it just happened to be like, we weren't trying to do that mm. every single time. Even when we moved over full time to Jesus film, we were part campus, part Jesus film. We moved full time over. 
we were not looking for position in the same place, but that's where the Lord put us, you mm-hmm. know? And so that's, so that's nice because we get to travel together and that kind of thing. That's so, so cool. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. When it sounds like uh, being very similar in personalities and in, in mindset, mm-hmm. even just adaptability, uh, y'all, y'all probably have the same perspective on the future and mm-hmm. on your own, uh, your own personal mission ministry as well. And, and what that, that future looks like. And mm-hmm. so, um, what I'd love to know from you guys now is what is the what, what does the future look like for y'all, and then what what do you think the future looks like for the digital evangelism that you're in, involved in? Yeah. Um, I'd love to know kind of both. Hmm. <laughs> Good question. Um, we don't know the future. You don't know. You know. Well, where, where do you feel like the Lord is leading you at this uh, point right, in time? Right. Let me ask the, right. the okay. safer question. Well, <laughs> I think in terms of you know being on staff and career. Uh, and we've talked about this. It's like, you know, we have friends and family that are, you know, our age reaching, you know, retirement age mm-hmm. and, um, you it's know, trying happen. to decide <laughs> what they want to do. And we've said, we'll just be in ministry until we can't be, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and we don't really know what that's going to look like. You know, we don't know if it's staying with this team for as long as we can or, you know, God may call us to be you know, in another country. I, yeah. I think we're both very open to what God uh, wants wants us to do. Um, and, you know, that could sound flippant, I guess, but at the same time, I, the flexibility part of us is, okay, God, You're use real, us however you roll can with use it. us. Yeah. You know? I'm not really an upfront type of guy that wants to stand out there and teach and things like that, but I'm like, God, if you can use me in any other way, mm-hmm do it, you know? So, um, that's why I've liked doing film is I can be behind the scenes scenes. and, you know, and doing my thing and, you know, I don't have to be the head. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. So Jules, um, what about the, the advancement of technology? And, um, I mean, you guys are, you, you said, Hey, look, we're staying on top of it. We're pressing the boundaries of what we even feel comfortable doing. So you're obviously not afraid to embrace all of these new tools being um, uh, created and, and utilized now mm-hmm. for evangelism. But what do you see that looking like in the years to come uh, at the current trajectory that we're on? And what do you see your role being in that? <laughs> that would be interesting. Like like with Jesus Film, um, they are constantly give, uh, creating new software and things for us to do things quicker. I always joke about how did the disciples do this? Because <laughs> it takes like 20 of us to do this. But, um, but other than that, uh, technology, it does scare me a lot of it. Mm. I mean, Facebook scared me or, or Instagram yeah. or what is the, you know, Twitter, all these things can kind of um, be like, I don't want to be there. But it's actually, you know, our director, his name is Josh Newell, and he he is just on it, and he listens to his team. He listens to people on the ground. Our solutions teams are amazing. They're always researching. And recently, we did do an outreach in another country that we use the NFC chips, yeah, and the, or they're called car, uh, not chips, but um, I forget they're they're kind of the same thing that with the credit card, right? Little, it's the uh, same type air, of thing, air tag, right? A tag, yeah, an yeah, NFC yeah. tag. Yeah. So that. Um, gave the the guy who's on staff there he puts it on his phone and when he starts sharing he would go up to students and just if they tap their phones the, the people could just download it's not doing a QR code and all right. that kind of thing so even the QR codes a long time ago Rick had to do a QR code on the back of a shirt and we're like this is kind of elementary it's like they could have just done this and then when we found out what happened with that QR code um I forget what country that was in Egypt yeah, I think I but um it was, you know, just there's things that we are afraid of. And when we think about the future and what we keep being told is going to be the future, we've got to be there. Yeah. We have to be there. And so I'm a reluctant one. But when I see the passion of our director and the rest of our team and and they have a plan, you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're showing this is how we're going to do this. And just knowing they're they're not thinking, OK, you know, we've got these spaces so we're going to use those spaces now. They're not thinking that. They're thinking way beyond. Mm. So, Kind of to follow up with that, and just just yesterday I, they, there was a Zoom call, um, and it was all about technology and, you know, the, the things that are kind of right on the edge, things that are happening right now. And right. It, it mainly talked about AI mm-hmm. and how AI is going to be used and how it can be used and, you know, ministry. And that's one of those areas where it's very like, 
you yeah. know, this could be good or this could be really it bad. It could go really you poorly. Know? Um, so it was interesting to hear mm -hmm. them talk about AI in terms of ministry. And I mean, you know, I couldn't go into everything that they said, but there are all these tools out there that um, that are free that people mm -hmm. can just go on and, you know, use that um, – I think God can do some amazing things through that. But, you know, we're right at the edge of, you know, the beginning of that, at least Jesus film is. And, yeah. But they're kind of, they have the posture of what, how is God going to use this in, in the gospel? You know, so that was a cool uh, call to be on because it's not something I've thought a lot about. Mm -hmm. um, I've probably thought more negatively about that than I anything. I think we all have. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So uh, that was encouraging. Yeah, that's great. That's mm. great. Well, um, guys, it's been such an honor to have you on today, and uh, I'm encouraged. Mm. Uh, my heart is uplifted to mm. to know <laughs> the work that's happening for the sake of the gospel. Where, I mean, I think historically the church has been afraid of embracing technology right. and afraid of utilizing it as well mm -hmm. for the sake of the gospel. And it's just so encouraging to hear that you guys are doing that mm. and seeing such success. I mean, yeah. For one campaign, hundreds of people coming to know, know the Lord. That's that's in a huge. month in a close country. It's in a just month amazing. in a close country. <laughs> that's that's yeah. obviously such a God mm -hmm. thing. So, anyway, thank you for sharing that with us sure. here on Good Business today. Um, so before before we wrap up, um, now that everyone knows who you are, now that everyone knows, hey, these folks are making an impact, and your team is obviously mm -hmm. involved in that as well. How can people engage with you and? Um, and what should they be doing? I know a way. Okay. <laughs> uh, one way is we have uh, film schools all over the world. Okay. And I think that's when I first met you. I was yeah. I was meeting with you to talk about it. We need filmmakers um, who are willing to travel. Their travel would be paid. They also get paid for doing what they do to teach film to people in other countries. We just mm -hmm. got back from Nigeria. And that, you know, it's and once we go, we bring a lot of equipment in. Mm -hmm. And so there is a little trepidatious because of how things can go in other countries. But we leave things with, we leave all the equipment with the people so, so they can make their own films in their own context. But um, we can only do one film school at a time. Mm -hmm. We need, we are, we have so many requests for that, that, um, and it's just, it's amazing when during that week they make their own films wow. and we can use some of them. But then afterwards, they begin to do that on their own. But that's one way that people can engage with us if they're interested as a filmmaker, sound, editing. I think he said um, Encore. Is it editing on Encore is what they need um, to people that can teach that. And it's just a week long mission trip type thing, but everything's taken care of. So that's, that's so kind of cool. neat. That's really that's cool. That's one way. What about you? Well, one of the, yeah. the main things I think, uh, and it's, it's more of a resource is people can go on to, jesusfilm.org uh, or in the app store and just download the Jesus Film app. Mm -hmm. And on that, it has pretty much every resource that Jesus Film offers, short films, you know, long format, you know, the feature length Jesus Film. I mean, it, almost anything you can imagine. But that, um, that to me is a great resource for, for people that just want to do ministry in whatever mm -hmm. context they're in. Um, and... Um, you know, there's so much new stuff happening and being put on that uh, app um, that I think that's the best way people can really engage in the ministry, you know, mm. so. Um, I love that. I love that. So encouraged. Mm. Well, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to Good Business today. And uh, be sure to check out the description below. I'll have links to the films that we talked about today, as well as the links that uh, Rick and Jules both mentioned. And um, I really encourage you to engage. Um, if you're a filmmaker, or even if you're a business leader and you want to support the Jesus Film Project, um, definitely engage. Feel free to reach out to me, Clay, at goodagency.com. I'd be happy to connect you guys to Rick and Jules. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys next week on Good Business.